video was originally recorded May 2018 at Tibet House US in New York City. To watch more videos from this program, please visit TibetHouse.us. that we start with a little bit of meditation. So we'll do well, we'll do a little bit of Menla meditation even though we're in New York and Tibet house. But we'll do a little Tibetan style one. Okay? And you have a lot of tanka still on the wall. So that's kind of nice, you know. But uh, you may have your own icon image. Okay, so go into meditative mode. And um, Take a few deep breaths, not too deep, but uh, take a couple of breaths and relax. And then imagine that you're looking into your own face. You're following the famous Mark Epstein mindfulness meditative metaphor of setting your mindfulness up in front of yourself and looking back into your own face and looking to see the real you, to find the real you. And not being sure really if it is the tip of your nose or the middle of your brain or your heart certainly is not the mask of your face. And if you feel a little disoriented trying to do that, looking back into your body and self, body, mind and self, then just be disoriented and let yourself melt a little bit into maybe Acknowledging your uncertainty about who you really are. And then imagine that your, your melted state, the lump of whatever you are, is in your ideal environment, top of a mountain, and a wonderful, safe, secluded clearing in a f beautiful forest, sitting by a stream. I always like to be sitting on a grassy slope, going down to Lake Manasarova, with Mount Kailash behind me in the north, and all kind of snow-peaked mountains in a circle beyond the lake and some fluffy clouds in a blue sky. And then imagine that in the sky, whoever is your most cherished mentor, if you have a teacher, a teacher, if you're a Zeni, a Roshi, if you're a Tibetan type, a Lama, if you're a Vipassana person, maybe a Burmese master, or Thai, or Vietnamese, and whoever is, or some ancient person, Buddha, or somebody in another religion, Krishna, or Jesus, or Moses, or Muhammad, or whoever it might be, that the most amazing being that you'd feel most amazed about if they were here with you right now, in the sky, looking down at you, smiling at you, blessing you, with sort of light cascading down from that person, or persons if there's a number of such beings in your history or in your imagination. So that you feel like you would feel if this most esteemed person or persons was actually present. And then arise in that context with open self-definition, 
discarding any self-evaluations like I can't meditate, I can't visualize, I'm this, I'm that, whatever, I'm we're thinking about something else. And just temporarily feel you're in the ideal refuge situation with your mind totally open to what you might un come to understand, with what you might come to feel, with how positive you might imagine the world around you. Just bathe in such a setting. And if you can, you can also add to it a feeling of all beings being around you and whatever gracious feeling you may have <coughs> by imagining this, this protector beings above you, you want to share with all the beings around you, like a metta thing. May you feel protected, and may you feel grace, and may you feel blessed, and may you feel buoyed up by positive setting. So, in other words, you imaginatively create a setting of refuge, and a setting of sharing refuge. So you're both receiving and giving. In the Tibetan tradition, at the beginning of a meditation or a session of learning, creating the most positive setting your imagination is capable of is considered essential to a successful session of meditation. Once you feel in such a positive setting, then you can forget about the setting and turn your mind to counting your breath one to ten, like a mindfulness thing, or whatever it is you may be working on in your own practice, within a kind of super positive setting, like which you do create habitually in a, in a meditation room or space or shrine. So you make this shrine around you before you start and then you forget about it and focus on whatever you want to focus, whatever you're working on. In my own case, I like to meditate on the preciousness of the human embodiment endowed with intelligence and opportunity and with compassion and friends and companions and loved ones and loving ones and how such a wonderful evolutionary opportunity I should try to waste my time less than I do. <laughs> That's what I tend to focus on. Trying to appreciate more the positive situation so as to waste it less.
Okay.